Today we will be learning the basic functions of the image manipulation program GIMP. If you're not familiar with GIMP, you can visit their website, GIMP.org. It is an acronym standing for the GNU Image Manipulation Program. And if you're not familiar with the GNU operating system, please visit GNU.org. You can download GIMP for Unix, Windows, and Mac. Now once you have downloaded for the Mac, you will install it to the applications. And when you click on GIMP, you will find very quickly that you need X11. Now if you're not familiar with X11, you can download it straight from the Apple website. Now once you download X11, it will be saved under the Utilities folder. Once you are running X11, you can open GIMP. GIMP is very basic to use, very easy, and you have three main windows here. This is the toolbar, and this is for you to create a new project. If you've noticed my desktop, it is a flyer I've made with GIMP for my band's latest upcoming concert and we will go over step by step how I made that flyer. First you need to start with the base background photograph. I found this photograph under my pictures folder. It was from a vacation me and my wife took just recently. It was from a relocation camp from World War II in Utah. Once we have the file opened, you can adjust how large you want the photograph while you're working on it. I will have it at about 50 percent. Maybe a little bit smaller. Now as you can see, many of the graphics I have on the flyer are embedded directly into the background photograph because you can work in layers with GIMP. I will start with the venue graphic. It helps to be organized, of course. There's a preview of the photograph. Now it is very important that you open each layer under this. If you do, if you select just open, it'll create a completely different photograph. On my toolbar tool bar here, I'm going to select this icon, which allows me to move layers very easily within the photograph. My placement is fairly close. We won't resize it. Under filters, you can find you see that there are many different preset effects that you can add to the photograph. I 
I need to go under tools in order to make the background of the logo transparent. You can preview it, of course. The grid in the background indicates that it will pick up on whatever the background photograph is. Once I click OK, you see it is now embedded into the photograph. I can move it anywhere and you can see the background as it is. I can do that with all the other photographs that I've used in this picture. For example, this needs to be resized. This is the scale tool. Once again, very easy to use. You select the picture and just drag and pull. You do have to make sure that you press this button in order to scale it before switching back to any other tool. My placement was right about there. Once again, I go to this button right here, color to alpha, when you press it, you'll notice that now the grid is behind the white of the lettering. In order to change that, you can select what color you want to switch to the alpha grid on this menu. But what helped me was to reduce the colors of this photograph. Under the colors menu, there's the posturize tool. To switch and reduce colors. Now if you notice when once I invert these colors I can very easily now switch the white background into the existing background. And then invert once again. Now it is similar to how it looks in the flyer. You add a little text. Wherever you want it to say. Which is also under the toolbar. Very simple program to use. That's the date. I'll just leave it as that for now and if you notice in the picture as a very faded almost worn look and there are options that you can use under GIMP to give it that sort of feel I used a couple of these rendering, nope, 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 it was under decor. Right now is actually adding imitation coffee stains to give it a kind of faded look to it. When you use this particular function, it chooses where the coffee stains will be. When I made my flyer, I had to do this a couple times, so it was to my liking. Now as you can see, at least to me, the main difference 
the completed flyer. Looks very sharp. Looks very crisp. And does not blend in well, at least to my satisfaction, with the background. Another great filter on GIMP. is also under the decor tab old photo now you do have to mess with the settings a little bit I'm not exactly sure what I chose last time But you'll notice a drastic difference in the sharpness of the text and the graphics and how it blends in a lot better with the background photograph. This only scratches the surface of what you can do with this great image manipulation program.